So eventually we got to the root text of the Mahamudra. <laughs> So, in Hebrew, it's on page 20, in English, so, let's see. Even though there are different terms like um, dependent arising and uh, co-emerging, um, like the so the five and the the same taste and um, the one that uh, gives peace, dzogchen, uh, the middle way. When these are analyzed, the yogis with their own experience and wisdom in the uh, writings and logics, they all agree about the same meaning of all these terms. No. view of individually ascribed names, there are numerous traditions such as those of the simultaneously arising as merged, the amulet box possessing five, the six spheres of equal taste, the four syllables, the pacifier, the object to be cut off, Dzogchen, the discursive Madhyamika view, and so on. Nevertheless, when scrutinized by a yogi, learned in scripture and logic and experienced in meditation, their definitive meanings are all seen to come to the same intended point. So in this verse, so from the point of view of individually ascribed names, there are numerous traditions such as those of the 
simultaneously arising as merged. All these terms come from the perspective of the Kagyu tradition. And then there is uh, that which uh, should be dispelled, which is, comes from the uh, from the and the and the terms that have come from the Nima, from the Geluk, etc. So actually, when these terms, when when the yogis they uh, analyze these terms, they they all agree as to their um, definitive meaning. So Rinpoche said that there there are different ways that uh, the different traditions have uh, come about. And um, here there are different names that are uh, given to the ultimate meaning. But but when we analyze the, these terms by by relying on scripture and logic that uh, analyzes the ultimate meaning, so we rely on scripture of ultimate meaning. And, and also on logics of definitive meaning. So the, in addition to these two things, so someone who has experiential wisdom of these traditions and these points, Chugin, who composed this text, this uh, through texts of the Mahamudra, according to the according to the traditions of the Geluk and the Kagyu, so he says that finally all these traditions come to one same point. So, it, if this is this, the case of analyzing the the lineage of Panchen uh, Lama, who the first one was Panchen Losan Chogyen, and the, the next one was Panchen Losan Yeshe, the one after him was. Was Paden Yeshe. So Panjin Paden Yeshe said, since the first Panjin Lama, Panjin Osan Chogyen, he passed away. So since he passed away, he cannot debate with his first uh, incarnation. But, but, but if he could uh, debate with his uh, with his previous sign. Uh, so he would ask him some uh, very precise questions. For example, Pechinosan Chogin says that these traditions are all finally get to the same point. But if this is true, but is this true? Of course, there are different ideas in different traditions. For example, there are some who say that in the Dzogchen, the yogi understands emptiness, understands, realizes emptiness, but what he realizes is not a non-affirming negation, but rather an affirming negation. This is what we mentioned yesterday, a non-affirming negation and an affirming negation. So there's some tradition in the Dzogchen that say when you understand emptiness, you understand it correctly so so you understand it so you get to an affirming negation so the third Panchen Lama Panchen Palden Yeshe he wondered whether it is possible to say that the view of the Gelugpa is the same as the Dzogchen uh, do they finally meet the same point Hey, hey, 
tradition finally made the same uh, essential point. So there's, there's a debate about this. As a great scholar who's called Lin Senjing Mei Lingpa, who was a Jirtan in the Nyingma tradition, he composed a text that is called the White Lotus. And this White Lotus, he says, hey, hey, which is like, <laughs> which is like, hey, hey. <laughs> the Mahamudra, the Dzogchen, the Kagyo. So even though we say that they get to the f same uh, essential point, we need to check it because there is still a discussion regarding that. So someone who, who is knowledgeable in the writings 
and also in the logic. So the the writing and the logic they both need to be of the um, of the ultimate point, but they also need the experience of meditation. So only these people can see that the, it's the same essential point because the knowledge of the writings and logic as well as the personal experience that is when the discussion can arise or these tradition do they come to the same essential point for example in the Nyingma the view of emptiness is is an affirming negation which they they finally meditate on a negation that affirms something and in the Gelugpa they claim that it's a non-affirming negation. So is this a different view? Rinpoche claims, says that uh, the one who has the experience find, uh, is the one who can see that these traditions come to the same essential point. So, until now we have discussed the dharmata, the nature of phenomena, and we have created, we have we have uh, spoken about a specific thesis, and the thesis, and the thesis in Tibetan means the object which we want to prove. So that which we which we wish to prove is the nature of our phenomena. So the, what, as we spoke about in the last four days, the nature of reality, the emptiness, is a non-affirming negation. This is the conclusion that we have reached. And not only have we re have reached this conclusion, but also we've used uh, sources from the Indian and Tibetan tradition. We have spoken about, uh, we qu quoted Chandra Kirti's text, Nagarjuna's sutras, and also Kungkian Lodjian Alapta, Jingmen Lingpa, and others. And of course, we use or rely on on the logic that Lama Tsongkhapa Jirinpoche has left for us. So all these things are the basis on which we rely in this discussion. And we want to make the basis, to found the base, to make it strong, uh, to, so in order to analyze the emptiness which we meditate upon. So we want to set some measure for emptiness, which relies on the writings of the Buddha, the Kangyur, and its and the commentaries, which are the Dengyur. So with with the combination of this, the Kagyur and the Dengyur, we want to we want to set a measure for the discussion about emptiness of uh, a non-affirming negation. So, now another book.
So if she was looking again at the text that was written by Kensington Matenzi, which explains in, in, the, in the, that uh, specific part the differences between the highest yoga tantra, the Anuttara yoga tantra, the, the, the lower tantras, and we can, uh, as well as the sutra tradition and the perfection tradition. So, so what it says in this text is, on, the, on one side we put the highest yoga tantra, and on the other side we, we put the lower tantras. And the explanation on the way that uh, the samadhi, the concentration, is developed is explained in one way on the, in the tantras, in the lower tantras, and in another way in the highest yoga tantra. And when we compare these uh, different uh, meditation techniques, so first of all, there are differences as to the the object, the object on which we meditate, and on the basis, the basis uh, on which the meditation relies on. For example, when we when we look at the explanation of shamatha and vipassana, or calm abiding. Oh, like this uh, deep introspection. So we are taught that in the different tantras, that first of all, we, um, 
we have a shamatan, and on that basis, vipassana. That means that 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 it is done in a serial way. And in the highest yoga tantra, we we do these at the same time. So this is a particular point for the highest yoga tantra. This is what distinguishes it from the others as well. So this is uh, exemplified with uh, the text that Rinpoche uses, that, that which says that especially when we check the the highest yoga tantra, which has got the generation stage and then the completion stage. Uh, then we leave it, we, we place it on the view, we place the mind on the view um, without analyzing, and then we meditate just on that for some time. And this is a specific, unique point for the highest yoga tantra, and it is different from other the other uh, lower tantras. And not only that, but also it is different um, it is different in the way that we meditate about the view in the sutra tradition. So Rinpoche says that when he contemplates about this uh, essential point, he says that he got uh, quite a few teachings from His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And he also studied different traditions in Buddhism, the Sakya, the Nyingma, the Kagyu. And, and he received uh, teachings from a variety of teachers. And if finally he got to a conclusion, whether the conclusion is correct or incorrect, he doesn't know. But it could be that it's a mistaken uh, conclusion. But in any case, what Rinpoche is talking about is what uh, Lama Tsongkhapa explained. As for, uh, as to a certain stage in the Guya Samaja Tantra. So when the Guya Samaja Tantra 
X is explained according to Lama Tsongkhapa in a text that is called The Lamp Illuminating the Five Stages of the Completion Stage in the Guya Samaja. So he says that when you get to a stage which is called isolation of body or physical isolation, <coughs> so at a certain point, we are, we have become the exalted wisdom of great bliss. We have made it apparent. And it is said that in this specific point, by Lama Tsongkhapa, that we abide for some time, not on emptiness. So Rinpoche, when Rinpoche contemplates about this point, um, on the basis of the teachings that he received from His Holiness the Dalai Lama and other traditions, he tried to understand what does this point mean. As he said, it could be that he's mistaken, it could be not, but in any case, uh, his opinion is that when we, when we make apparent this exalted knowledge or wisdom of great bliss, what we're talking about actually is a mind which is called the clear light mind, which is extremely subtle. So we want to use this mind. We want to use this mind in order to understand emptiness, because as it is said, it has to be uh, uh, indivisible, um, like water that is mixed with water. So in order to get to a state that the mind and the object, the subject mind and the object, or like water that is mixed with water, it is necessary for us to to make this um, exalted knowledge of great bliss. We have to make it apparent. And since we have to make it apparent, and at this point, it is extremely subtle. So then we also uh, realize what it is. So the text says in this specific place, that uh, physical isolation in the completion stage. Rin Pusha says that when you think about the mind, the, this uh, exalted knowledge of great bliss and its object, which is the wisdom, so the wisdom is a non-affirming negation. But the mind itself, which realizes emptiness, this exalted, exalted knowledge of great bliss, it, you can call this mind an affirming negation. So it becomes apparent, it understands, it realizes emptiness, and the emptiness is a non-affirming negation, but since the mind is apparent, Rinpoche wonders whether the mind itself can be called an affirming negation at this point. So therefore, Rinpoche says that, uh, as a recording, uh, as to this uh, question, whether the emptiness is an affirming or non-affirming negation, or the differences in different traditions. So Rinpoche says that his way of uniting all the traditions and to find them as not contradictory is by, first of all, when relying on on the things that he uh, has just mentioned, of uh, the conclusions of Chandrakirti, Nagarjuna, Lama Tsongkhapa, and, uh, and also scholars from the Nyingma, Nanjirabchang, and others. So they have also come to the same conclusion that emptiness is, is a non-affirming negation. So when you look at it, as, as to the mind that realizes emptiness, and the mind is the exalted knowledge of great bliss. So it, we can say that the mind of great bliss, this is the affirming negation. Maybe this is how we can solve this dispute.
There is a price that the Dalai Lama, by the way, when Rinpoche speaks about the Dalai Lama, there are different ways to refer to him, and Rinpoche calls the Dalai Lama the wish-fulfilling jaw. So in the praise of uh, the Lama Tsongkhapa, when we when we analyze the clear light mind, the clear light mind which is the ultimate subject, and we understand it correctly. We, uh, with the essential point of the view, 
then we understand that all the teachings from from the uh, different uh, traditions uh, of uh, Tibet, so all of them without exception, they, they come to the same essential uh, view which has got one taste. So Rinpoche said that when you look at the meaning of His Holiness the Dalai Lama in this praise to Lama Tsongkhapa, he said that His Holiness says that when we, when we look at the different traditions in Tibetan Buddhism and the way that they describe the clear light mind, that during the practice becomes the mind of the ultimate, subject of the ultimate, and ultimate subject, um, the subject of the ultimate, and we understand it with the use of the essential point of the view. So we understand that not only do the four tra different the four traditions of Tibetan Buddhism, the 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 Nyingma, the Kagyu, the Gelugan, the Sakya. So not only do they get to the same point, but uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we, we can also add the Jonanga tradition. But uh, they assert a philosophical idea that asserts uh, Shentong. So before that, Rinpoche says that when we uh, observe emptiness, which is that which we want to realize. So this realizes and this uh, this realization is a non-affirming negation. Emptiness is a non-affirming negation, and this and all the traditions uh, they accept that. And when they said that we can develop the mind, the subject. The subject, the mind that understands, that realizes emptiness. So the different traditions they they use the mind, the subtlest mind, in order to realize emptiness. And they describe how how we can make it uh, the subtle mind apparent and use it in order to uh, realize emptiness. So this clear light mind, which is the subtlest mind, we call it different names. We call it the the mind of the base, the clear light mind, the natural mind, the basic mind, and the 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 point, the aim of all the of all these traditions is to make this mind apparent with our ex with our. Mm, practice so that the so that the the clear light mind and um, and the view of emptiness will be one taste. They'll be indivisible. So in order to do this, we need first of all to make the clear light mind apparent. So, for it, so that it is one taste, like water that is poured in water, it has to be apparent. So in the process of meditation, all the tra different traditions, they use different techniques in order to make this mind apparent. So from that point of view of the object, it, uh, it's exactly the same emptiness which is realized from the point of view of the subject of the mind that realizes emptiness directly. This mind is called the exalted wisdom of great bliss, or the clear light mind, the mind of the base, and, and other names. And then we look at the different uh, way that the traditions refer to this uh, mind. And Rinpoche says that in the sutra, in the mother sutras, which are the perfection wisdoms, the, so the, the emptiness was taught in the mother sutras, and the emptiness there is like a, is a rantong, which is like a self emptiness. So so rantong and shen dong 
So if you have studied this, uh, Rantong means empty of self, and Shantong means empty of other. So in the Mother Sutras, which are the, per the perfection of wisdom sutras, so, so Rantong was taught the emptiness of self. So, they discuss the physical aggregate, and the physical aggregate is empty of being a physical aggregate. This is how an example is given. So that it is, it is empty, the form aggregate is empty of uh, the form aggregate, and um, so th this means it was empty of itself. So, so Rinpoche's, the, all the, tra the Buddhist tradition, uh, including the Jonan tradition, they have all come to the same conclusion as to the view of emptiness. And there is a particular usage in the Jonan tradition of the term, empty of other. So when Rinpoche thinks of the, uh, the, way, this u the way this is used, the Shintong, the empty of other, in the, in the Jenin tradition, so when we look at the process of making the exalted wisdom of clear light into an apparent one, so we go through a process that in the meditation we, we cause the disintegration of uh, coarse minds that disintegrate one after each other. Un until the until uh, making the clear light on the barren. So in this process, we first of all we first of all disintegrated um, through the meditation the the, f the four uh, the four elements. And after and later on, we get to the mind of the. 18 natural conceptions, the 18 natural, con 80 natural conceptions. So this mind comes together with the wind that supports it. And the next time, stage after this mind, uh, disintegrates, uh, there, is, there is a wide appearance. So also this mind really is, is supported by wind, and when this also disintegrates, so there's another mind that is called the flaring red appearance, and this also comes with uh, wind. And then the next stage is then there's the black appearance, and when this uh, dis it disintegrates. So then finally there's a clear light mind. So when you observe the Shintong, so you look at the process of the 18 natural conceptions, this uh, conceptual mind, and which is disintegrated, and then the white light, the the red light, the black light. When you eventually get to the to the clear light, it is you say it is empty of others because it is empty of of the eighteen natural conceptions. It is empty of of the appearance of the white appearance, this red, uh, the red appearance and the black appearance. So from this perspective, we can say that the, we c you can claim that, that this clear light mind, it is also empty of other, because it is empty of all the other minds that uh, came before it. So Rinpoche thinks that this explanation works. This is an explanation that he received from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, from the wish fulfilling to him, who is the Dalai Lama. And he said it doesn't only make sense to him, but it's, it is also 
um, it is extremely subtle and, in, um, and it, 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 it can be seen as uh, personal instructions for practice. Is th does this happen in the process of death? That question arose. So as for your question, is this a, is the, are these the same process in, uh, in dying? So yes, these are the these are the same stages, and when of uh, dying. So th this is what we when when the uh, at the time of the basis when we die the, we go through these stages, and also during the practice uh, we want that through our meditation we can we can create we, we can press particular points to enter to enter these points in our Vajra body so that through the meditation we can cause this disintegration 
the, these, these stages. And uh, in addition, in the, in the completion stage, we also go through this process of going through the eight stages of disintegration, absorption. So the answer is yes. And also, Rinpoche wanted to, <coughs> to mention another uh, to mention another thing that was given by Lo San Gyatso, who was a student of Kilo Gyatso, who was one of the incarnations of the Dalai Lama. And he said that as for the yogi who can who can who can attain a liberation in this very life. So there are two methods, there are two alternative methods that can be used. There's the first method that, that I transforms the clear light mind this, of the subject, so making it apparent. And in order to make the clear light mind apparent, we we use tantras like the mother tantra of Chakrasamvara. Uh, that there we we enter to specific pain uh, places in the body through meditation. We uh, with, uh, we influence the channels, the winds in the body. Um, so this so we use we use the Vajra body and we press particular points in the Vajra body. We use the channels and the, the winds and the drops so that in the process of meditation we can we can make the clear light mind apparent uh, while moving through these eight uh, states of mind. So in this process we we cause a uh, Coarse minds to disintegrate, and the subtle and subtle minds become apparent until a, s a state that the clear light mind, which the subtlest one, has becomes apparent. So this is one method, and another method. Rinpoche uh, Losan Gyatso says that we find the clear light mind according to the Nigma is that. The, the enigma has clear light mind, and this is by practicing Dzogchen, which doesn't necessarily uh, uh, require pr pressing on particular points in the Vajra body. It doesn't require uh, working with the channels, the winds, and the drops, but rather it focuses on the mind itself. So we want, we want to, to make we want to get to a mind that is a Rigpa Kuntu Sangpa, the all-pervading uh, wisdom. It is uh, the, the all-goodness. So we begin doing this um, with, a, with a coarse mind. This is according to the Nyingma tradition. So first of all, we want to acknowledge the, the nature, the, the coarse nature of the mind. And this process of meditation will take some time. And when we have uh, recognized um, this coarse mind, ev eventually we can continue onwards and acknowledge uh, the subtler minds. And in this way, uh, gradually, we can acknowledge and realize the the subtler and subtler states of mind. It is like it is like peeling a fruit, which finally we get to its seed, which is like a precious gem. So we do this so that until finally we can realize. We, we can realize the nature of the clear light mind. So time is, uh, is up. Uh, look at the schedule. Oh, yeah, yeah.
we have a few questions. You may bring them forth. <laughs> She's about to jump from her chair, so you can ask. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Vajra that pressing points and all that? I don't understand that. What is it? What's the connection and what's the meaning of the Vajra? Okay, the question is, Mm, she said it's a common term. So first of all, this germ to press uh, into specific points in the Vajra body is a, it is a, quite a common term in the highest yoga tantra. So of course, this term has got a lot of meaning. Rinpoche wonders whether to give a, a concise explanation of pressing on particular points. Um, in the Vajra body, but um, but the Vajra that we're using here, the Vajra which we're discussing, so generating the mind and body which are indispensable, which are indivincible, sorry. Um, so this comes from a, ma a clear light mind that realizes emptiness uh, directly. So in order to in order to get to this aim from the point of view of the highest yoga tantra, we use we we use something which we have naturally on the basis from the point of view of the highest yoga tantra time of the base. So besides the body which we have now, we also have a set of channels which are in our body. And in these channels we have uh, winds, the energy winds, and also drops. So we want to use these uh, channels, the winds and the drops, in order to, to transform to transform the clear light mind uh, to be apparent so that it realizes emptiness directly and to and to cause it to to be manifested as a particular yidam 
and we want to do this in order and we do in order to do this we need to activate particular points in the channels in the winds etc so Rinpoche says that in a particular uh, in a when when we think about the usage that we do with the with the channels the winds and the drops um, we can we can take an example and that will make it understandable so when if we buy a car our aim is not just to have the car but rather uh, so that we uh, to use the car so we can get to we can get to a certain point so that our aim or destination this is what we have the car for it's like the uh, like a flight the um, its aim is the destination so in the same way we can say that the usage that we do with with um, the channels the winds and the drops is for the is for the destination the aim of making apparent manifest the clear light mind to make it uh, manifest what what do you mean by manifest So since uh, we have a only a short time, so Rimshi wants to say some summary words. So the the purpose for which we have come today is is to is to study the Mahamudra. But Rinpoche wants to apologize first for not reading the Mahamudra text from the beginning to end. But but actually we didn't read the whole text of the Mahamudra. But the, but it wasn't Rinpoche's aim. That was his plan. <laughs> He thought that first of all we wanna we wanna start with a subject that uh, which we discussed in the last few days in order to found the 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 basis of the of the Mahamudra the, the, to create a building of the of the Mahamudra and the basis for this building is what we discussed in the last few days and Rimshi believes that it will be of benefit for the Mahamudra or in general. And of course, this subject is uh, not simple, it's complicated. And Rinpoche says that you showed a lot of interest. A lot of people have uh, made notes. They summarize the teaching. So thank you very much for the effort you have put in. And thank you for staying with us and to show uh, interest. And as Rinpoche said, it is not a simple subject, and and he is apologizing, uh, not making it easy for us, and didn't teach it with a great smile.
So in the last few days, Rinpoche did uh, his best in order to explain us this material, and we also had some periods of smiling and uh, having fun. Thank you very much to the uh, organizers, the Dharma Friends organization. So. Um, so, since um, Rimsha himself uh, spoke in Tibetan and someone had to translate it, uh, so and someone had to translate it to another language, so he says that without uh, translators it wouldn't have been possible. So he wants to thank me and my sister. So have a few guests that are English speakers and some who have come to see Rinpoche from abroad. So thank you to Shelley for translating. So, and of course there, there is the committee of uh, Dharma Friends. And uh, as well as the committee there are a few people who have, who have uh, joined in, uh, in helping to organize uh, the course. So, so from the depths of his heart, Rinpoche says thank you very much to everyone. So as we said uh, before, at the, at the, there is a action to do at the beginning and one to do at the end. The one to do at the beginning is to set the motivation, and the one and the one at the end is the dedication. Since we want to do the dedication now, it's the thing which we should do, which is dedicating all the merit that we have accumulated together. So we want to do it in a combination with the bodhicitta, the might of enlightenment. So as we say, uh, may all sentient beings for, for all others. So we want to dedicate this. We want to dedicate it all together with bodhicitta. And of course, that if we have generated the uncontrived uh, bodhicitta, that is great. But even if we haven't uh, gotten to this stage, we can still generate it. We can, um, in a contrived way, and just make sure that we dedicate our merits to all sentient beings. 
so that uh, with the means of bodhicitta, we can use uh, we can use this merit in order to attain enlightenment, as it is says in the Sutra of Subahu. Uh, Ripshe also said that we want to dedicate it with bodhicitta in a way that, as I said before, combined with the the last the last verse of Shanti Devas, for as long as space endures, for as long as sentient beings remain, that long may to remain to dispel the miseries of this world. So this is in the the last verse of uh, Shanti Devas engaging in the Bodhisattva deeds. So we also want to think of the benefit while using bodhicitta in order to dedicate all the merit that we have accumulated together. There, there is a verse that is taken from the sutra that is by Subai. So long as one drop in the ocean isn't exhausted, so long as the ocean isn't exhausted, so all the virtue coming from the mind of enlightenment will not be exhausted until we reach the state of enlightenment. So we dedicate the virtue and the merit that we have created together. But what, what we spoke about uh, now is a, 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 a dedication in the conventional way. So if we do this with bodhicitta, there is still there is still a possibility that anger or wrong views will ruin the merit that we have accumulated. So we want to prevent this. In order to prevent, um, we want to dedicate it in an ultimate way. So the ultimate dedication will be as as we spoke about in the last few days in the Mahamudra course. It will be united with a view of emptiness. So, by acknowledging the fact that there is no true existence, we will dedicate all the things that we have accumulated together with the with the realize with the understanding of the three spheres. So, we want to make sure that the merit that we have accumulated is dedicated uh, in conjunction with a view of emptiness. So in this way, we, we will definitely make sure that this merit will lead us to liberation and um, also to state of Buddhahood. And if we do it along the way like this, the anger will, will not be able to ruin our merit and nor the wrong views. She <laughs> <laughs> recited uh, two verses. One I got, the other one I, I haven't. Um, I hope I will get it again. <laughs> to the self, which is in my own mind, so that I can 
practice and train to develop the great, uh, the compassion and the mind of enlightenment. Bless me to go through the way that brings to to the union, so that I can accumulate the two uh, accumulations. <laughs> That's the second breath. Now it's clear. second verse that Rinpoche quoted, it is said that may your body and my own body become, become one unit, um, indivisible. May your speech and my speech become indivisible. May your mind and my mind become indivisible. May they become one unit in, in, in Dharma, in the Dharma data. So what this verse means that when we say, may your mind, may your body, may your speech, may your mind become indivisible from, from my own body, speech, and mind, it doesn't mean that, um, of course, we're referring to the Lama, but it doesn't mean that, that our, our body can be one body. It doesn't mean that the speech and the, our speech and the Lama speech can be one speech and, and also the mind cannot become one mind. But what we mean here is that the ultimate Lama we hope that the, la, the ultimate Lama who is uh, the ultimate sphere, become one taste with our body, our speech, and our mind. So this is something that was said by Dukchen Kingreba. And I do Is one taste with a Dharma datu. 
If you recognize it, he will always be with you. So enough, time's up. <laughs> don't, don't translate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> but time's up. So now, now do the dedication prize properly. <laughs>